Hi, uh, Jonathan York, Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at investment markets. Another really big test for the US market this week. Uh, you've got the Fed meeting, um, and it'll be very interesting to see the commentary that comes out. No one really expects any change on rates, but uh, with the uh, rising cases of COVID now in the US, it'll be very interesting to see what sort of commentary uh, the Fed uh, um, put forward on that. Because certainly there is some feeling that uh, you know the Fed may be more concerned about uh, the sort of rising cases of COVID, because really COVID holds the key to sort of any policy changes. We also have three big techs reporting this week. You've got Apple, Alphabet, and Microsoft. Now, so far, earnings have been pretty good and guidance has been pretty good, but it'd just be very interesting to see what these uh, three sort of uh, market heavyweights come out with. And that's all on the back of a little bit of disappointing news on the, the new home sales. That was down, uh, the market was looking for an up number, that came down around 6.6%. So certainly a mixed bag out there. Uh, you know, vaccines are still going pretty well in the US. Well, you are seeing a rising number of cases on this uh, on COVID with this new sort of Delta variant sort of sweeping across most of the US states now. Oil seems to have recovered after the uh, pretty, pretty big sell off. Uh, that's back above sort of 70 bucks a barrel now. In the UK, very interesting stats coming out on COVID because despite the sort of relaxation of restrictions, you've got rising cases. Uh, but those rising cases are uh, uh, sort of coming through. Hospitalizations are down. So although cases are up, hospitalizations are down and also the death rate is down as well. So what that does seem to be implying is that the vaccination is working. Um, you, it doesn't stop you from getting COVID, but what it does, it just reduces the symptoms and the severity of the illness. So now on the back of that, uh, certainly the UK is looking for some pretty good numbers going forward over the next sort of three to six months. Likewise in Europe as well, although you are getting a little bit of uh, sort of civil unrest out there, most, notice, most noticeably in Paris, really with the uh, conditions that have been placed on uh, activities, etc., that you can and cannot do depending on whether you have the vaccine or not. And that's really presenting a few problems out there for the government because really the last thing you want is the sort of civil unrest. There's enough sort of, uh, sort of uh, false uh, information being spread about COVID and that's really just fueling some of these uh, protests that are then turning into sort of just civil unrest. Similar situation in Australia with a big march uh, over the weekend in Sydney uh, protesting about uh, the, the, uh, the lockdown. Um, you know, and that is really on the backdrop of sort of rising cases as this uh, Delta variant really does sweep through New South Wales and Sydney in particular.
you know, the reason for the lockdown is trying to stop the spread, um, but that, you know, really doesn't seem to be happening because you're still getting, um, out of the uh, sort of 100 odd cases that have been reported new each day, um, around sort of 30 to 40 of those have been infectious while in the community. And that is just keeping the spread of the infection going. And it really is quite ironic because, uh, you know, Sydney's still in lockdown, um, but other states, uh, Southern Australia and Melbourne, have just come out of lockdown because their cases are dramatically reduced. Once they went into a limited lockdown, uh, Melbourne's only around five to six days. But just on the back of that, their cases were running around sort of 10 to 11 per day, whereas uh, Sydney is running at uh, sort of 120 plus per day. So it looks like uh, sort of Sydney and Greater Sydney area will be uh, locked down for a further four weeks. The rest of Australia is uh, sort of lifted on the lockdowns, and that should be good for the economy. Um, you know, certainly uh, really being helped by uh, um, sort of commodity prices and iron ore in particular. But also as well, it'll be interesting in August as we, we sort of head into reporting season, just to see what's coming through. Certainly those, uh, so the big uh, mining companies are expected to have some pretty good results. Also the banks as well. And given that uh, the uh, um, Australian Stock Exchange has been a bit of a laggard over the last sort of one to two years, it'll just be interesting to see how it trades over the next sort of six to nine months, because certainly potentially there does uh, seem to be some reasonable upside out there. And certainly the impact of the New South Wales lockdown is yet to be sort of felt and just be interesting to see what the Reserve Bank feels because again, you know, there was some talk about uh, potentially uh, looking to increase rates in Australia, um, you know, as early as sort of August, September time. Now I suspect that's now been put on hold. Now here in New Zealand, obviously with the uh, temporary suspension of the Trans-Tasman bubble, that's uh, sort of hitting tourism, and that's gonna be a bit of a dent to the economy. That added with the recent flooding on the uh, sort of west coast of the South Island, it's just gonna be interesting to see how they just sort of play through, because certainly, uh, you know, it, it's pretty tough out there. And when you add into the equation as well, the sort of uh, uh, pressure on supply chains and limited, limited supply of building materials, timber, etc. It's just going to be very interesting to see how it sort of plays through. And bearing in mind as well, there was some talk about a potential uh, rate increase here in New Zealand in August um, from the Reserve Bank. Um, you know, given the uh, uh, sort of uh, recent um, developments, um, that potentially could be on hold now. So again, you know, if you are looking for income, uh, you know, it is pretty tough in this low interest rate environment. If you're interested in seeing what is available, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles, and we look forward to speaking to you soon.